Okay, good evening all. Uh, welcome to uh, session 6A, um, email marketing and lead nurturing of uh, the Making Your Funnel Work program. Um, just a, a quick recap of the weeks before and sessions before. Uh, customer journey, we talked about measurement plan, analytics implementation, uh, we're coming uh, to running your business of uh, adding uh, content, uh, advertising, etc., putting up an uh, optimization and reporting framework, conversion rate optimization in your, every aspect of your funnel, content marketing, we're gonna talk about that a lot today. Uh, also talked about it about uh, with uh, uh, SEO a lot, um, uh, and lead generation, um, and now with lead nurturing, so creating the right content for the right stage of the customer journey. Um, GDPR, permission to uh, process data for certain specific goals. So the most general goal is a newsletter. Um, Google Analytics, use goals to uh, measure steps and uh, uh, progress in the in the in the customer journey at your website so in the content consumption utm tracking for traffic sources event tracking for everything what happens on site seo on and off page off page link building building authority on page uh, infrastructure and technical seo and content keywords long form content using semantics semantics and multimedia like video and graphics and interactive web uh, tools we talked a session about app marketing how that's a, a longer customer journey so uh, in most cases only with frequent uh, usage uh, it's, it's a positive ROI to, uh, to uh, send users to an app. Um, we talked about landing page optimization, value proposition, a very, really clear uh, value proposition, uh, nice uh, seductive images uh, or seductive persuasive images, uh, clear call to action with uh, uh, button text and uh, uh, testimonials and uh, ratings, reviews. We talked about trials, getting people into the trial. Um, don't ask for credit card details. Uh, if you want email addresses, send them a confirmation link where they have to click on the link before uh, anything is activated. If you need an, uh, a phone uh, number uh, for your outbound calls for uh, demos and other um, outbound calls and you really need a good telephone number, you need to send an SMS for verification code um, and call them really fast while they're locked in in their first session because you want them to discover your uh, most important features. We talked about uh, social media in the, on a high level, uh, wise content in the, in the early phase of the customer journey. Uh, so not in the last click conversion attribution aspect, but Actually, mostly in the first click or in the in the beginning of your of your funnel. Um, important for discovery and inspiration. Uh, and here, the size of the networks globally uh, on uh, monthly active users. Um, of course, we know that Facebook is by far the largest, but uh, YouTube from Google is really large, and uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, also assets of uh, the Facebook company. LinkedIn, B2B, um, but I think for B2B, of course, uh, especially uh, uh, B2B larger than sole proprietor ships companies is I think by, most, by, uh, by far the most important network. Sirius, nor has all big and good quality of uh, information of users. So then we, today we're gonna talk about email marketing and lead nurturing. Uh, email marketing will be uh, for uh, everybody who doesn't have an app, the most important uh, outbound uh, channel for contacting and nurturing uh, 
your contacts. Um, it's also, of course, uh, one of the oldest uh, channels of the internet after which is at the discovery of the introduction of the TCP IP protocol, the internet as we know it. And we're gonna talk a little bit, talk about metrics, list building, tools, sending, reputation, uh, text, HTML, uh, delivery rates, marketing automation, personalization, and features you have to look at. Um, for linear tree and talk about pain and fit, old school uh, band qualification, uh, budget, authority, need, and uh, time, schedule, urgency, um, authority, cr critical events. Some high level stats about email marketing. Uh, mobile opens accounts for 46% of all email opens at this moment. 35% uh, of business professionals check email on a mobile device. 73% of millennials prefer communications from businesses to come via email. Marketers who use segment, segmented campaigns note as much as 760% uh, increase in revenue. 35% um, of marketers send their customers three to five emails per week. I think that's a lot. 78% um, of marketers have seen an increase in email engagement over the last 12 months. Um, I'm not sure what the reason for that is, but it can be that uh, uh, on the on one hand, uh, spam filters are improving their services the last few years, and on the other hand, GDPR, so a must-have opt-in and bad reputation, you really get blacklisted. We come to that. 80% uh, of business uh, professionals believe that email marketing increases customer retention. 95% of respondents say marketing emails influence their pr purchase decisions. Um, 81% of B2B marketers say the most used form of content marketing is email newsletters. 87% of B2B marketers say email is one of the top three organic distribution channels. And we talked about that, I believe, um, content marketing in the distribution sec section. 90% um, of content marketers say email engagement is the top metric they track to measure content performance. Source, HubSpot. Um, if you're looking pure to the, uh, uh, the, the traffic channel email, uh, so not to uh, what, what's the role of um, uh, in, the, in the getting you leads through your funnel, um, but pure as a standalone uh, channel, um, you look at first, first and foremost to uh, deliver rate and bound rate. So uh, which percentage of the emails addresses on my list really do get my um, my email message. Uh, another uh, rate is the open rate. How many uh, people of the, which percentage of the people who actually receive my email open it. Uh, click rates from, from those persons who open it, uh, do click it. Uh, and you always have to think about, hey, where's the percentage of? Is this of all sent emails or only the opened emails? Um, Conversion rates from those clicks. Unsubscribes is really important metric uh, to watch. Um, if uh, if your uh, newsletter list is important for you, like uh, hey, how do long how long do people stay on your list? Uh, what's your net growth? Uh, so not only new uh, subscribes, also uh, the unsubscribes. Um, and can you? Uh, 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 see early indicators like uh, on average they uh, subscribe after three or four, four newsletters or if they haven't opened the last three newsletters they have a say 80 or 90 percent chance to uh, unsubscribe that kind of uh, analysis if you have a bigger email list uh, spam complaints is something you really want to prevent uh, we come to that uh, and conversion rates of course uh, or content consumption metrics uh, if in case of lead nurturing um, flow, uh, conversion rates are not that important. Of course, if you have a demo as a conversion rate, it's, it's an important goal. But uh, also, if they, if your email is relevant on itself, content consumption metrics. Um, managing your sender reputation. 
Uh, SPF, it's a standard policy framework, but it's it's something smaller than uh, the word suggestion, uh, word framework suggests. Uh, but you do have to uh, set some configurations and your DNS, so where your all your domain registration, etc., is uh, specified. So uh, um, email platforms like Gmail and Hotmail can uh, verify uh, that you are really the sender. Uh, and not one of other spam um, criminal. Um, use double opt-in. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a good best practice for uh, also to get your uh, email list really uh, clean and 100% uh, uh, bulletproof for uh, a delivery rate. Um, but it also lowers your conversion rates. So uh, it's a, it's a something you have to balance out for yourself. Um, clean your list for people who, uh, who have uh, uh, and a lot of email platforms now do it automatically, but something to watch, but also like uh, if people haven't uh, opened or engaged with your email for five or six times, well, maybe you should uh, put them on the other list and uh, your regular e newsletter, you send don't send them to those people, but you send them say once a quarter, or you say uh, you put them on an, uh, retain a list so uh, you try to get them back with a coupon or another offer um, and send regular uh, emails in a, in a steady cadence i'm not sure if that pronounced as well cadence cadence um, so uh, those sending houses um, get used to your reputation they know hey this email uh, address or this domain sends uh, Say every uh, news a week, uh, say 10,000 emails, and if it slowly climbs, that's consistent with their uh, expectations. Well, if you uh, normally send 10,000 per week, but suddenly it gets uh, gets up to 250,000, uh, uh, some uh, checks uh, will go off. Um, here are some URLs where you can uh, check your own reputation, and it, and if your domain is blacklisted. Um, Mostly that won't be the case, uh, but if you get a lot of complaints that, hey, I'm getting into the to the spam box or my email's getting into the spam box, um, that might be something uh, to check out. Um, how do you prefer to get in the, uh, that you, your emails uh, get in the spam folder uh, or how do you get into the Gmail primary tab? Um, well, ask new subscribers to add your email address to their address book. Use normal email address, news, info ads, your name ads, etc., um, or your full name, but not uh, uh, email to 23 uh, campaign at uh, yourdomain.com. Um, don't use uh, spam words uh, in the header of uh, in the subject line, but uh, also not generally in your email. Um, and if you do use those words uh, in the in the body of your email, quite uh, be a little bit defensive uh, on the low uh, low frequency with those words, um, because they really they're, there's a list of words that um, trigger alerts with those uh, email houses. Um, choose a reliable, good reputation email service provider. Um, well, most of the big names have, have really excellent uh, uh, reputations like uh, MailChimp, uh, Active Campaign, Campaign Monitor, uh, what else uh, you don't have. Um, but if, if you work with a local or uh, you have a web agency that uh, serves you with one of the other uh, not really big tools, be on your guard. Um, link to trustworthy domains. Um, in your emails, balance the image to text ratio. Um, so not, not the newsletter with one big image. Um, and don't buy lists of anybody. Um, because you, uh, every email others also has a profile of, hey, who sent, uh, sent uh, emails to this address? Um, and they know, hey, this is from a bot list. So uh, 
get a profile because you sent to that email address. Um, how to get on the Gmail primary tab, uh, advise people to check their promotion tab and spam folder, you do it on the thank you page. And of course, uh, in the welcome message, uh, but especially in the, on the thank you page after you receive the order or they filled in the lead form. Um, and send your emails individu individually. Sounds a little bit strange when you have a list, but um, there are ways uh, to do this. We will come to that with the tools. Um, personalization um, and emails. Um, but of course, it's uh, something similar to mail merge. So uh, the least you can do if you have the data available is uh, use the data uh, you have uh, available, like uh, first name, last name, or company name. Uh, you know what? But a personalization is also um, working with more dynamic uh, content. So um, send them certain emails or uh, send them emails with dynamic content based on their surfing behavior or which they, uh, which emails uh, link, links they clicked in uh, earlier email uh, sequences um, or send them based, uh, emails based on segmentations. Uh, we just heard with the um, stats that uh, market is, I believe got 630% increase in engagement if they use segmentations. Of course, e easy segmentations are gender, uh, interest, like uh, if you have a, a clothing shop, um, did they look at uh, boots or uh, trousers or um, jackets? Uh, well, easy to uh, send them a newsletter. Hey, uh, nice, uh, you, you looked at our shoes. Uh, here are some others we have in our uh, uh, collection. Um, show website uh, pop-ups with uh, specific messages. Um, of course, on topic, but you can imagine with uh, the fashion store. And if it's a first-time visit, um, and you're looking at the, the, the web page about the boots, um, you get a pop-up from, hey, uh, if you order our boots, uh, your boots uh, with us today, you get a coupon uh, of uh, send us, if you want to, uh, we have a special coupon for boots for 25% discount, only valid today. Leave your email address and we send you the coupon. Yeah, that's uh, the first form of lead uh, generation. Um, and so what is personalized, of course, not the 25% coupon, but the pop-up that has a message with booths, a coupon specific for boots. Um, dynamic content on the landing page. Uh, so if you send an email, uh, uh, you can also, uh, with a specific tooling, you can uh, have their uh, name or other uh, specific uh, data you have about them uh, embed on the landing page. So they have more, hey, this is something, uh, they speak to me, but you can do it also, uh, say, quite covered. To, so don't, hey, hi, Willem, how are you? Um, but like um, if uh, Willem works at the, at the company, say um, at the S&P 500 company, then you uh, put a specific text like uh, well, companies uh, that are in the S&P 500 have uh, usually the following worries, A, B, C, and we have a, pro a solution for that. Uh, so uh, you don't have to specific use the data uh, standalone or cold, but also um, the messaging on the landing page, depending on the data you have on the prospect on your email list. And of course, uh, you can personalize uh, for retargeting list, but that's uh, not really uh, from an email perspective, but um, what functionality uh, do you have to think about when you're choosing your marketing automation platform? Uh, and maybe this is a uh, little um, bit big step from email to marketing automation, but uh, there are mo almost no tools available at this moment anymore that only offer 
cold hard email. Yeah, like of course, if you have a Google Business Suite or uh, Microsoft Outlook, you use your Outlook or your Gmail as that's your email tool. Um, but as soon as you're really starting uh, to integrate it, for example, uh, with a CRM or any other address list, um, that's the most platforms that don't offer something like uh, Gmail Outlook have standard today. Um, so when you are considering a marketing automation, because you want to automate your flow and send uh, the leads through your funnel uh, and engage with your content, you have on your website or in your email newsletters. Um, what can you think about? Uh, chatbots, uh, live chat, uh, forms, so where uh, people can fill in uh, details, landing pages, but uh, landing page and forms, of course, they're quite close knit functionalities, but um, they are really something different uh, because the form you embed in the, in the landing page, while landing page is really a URL string, um, HTTPS, da, 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 da. Um, pop up messages, depending if you, so I'm not talking about people you don't know, like, hey, uh, leave your email address, but uh, send the pop up messages depending on what you know about them and when they visit and where they visit your website. Integration with social advertising, SMS, uh, and other platforms also have now integrations with uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp for Business. So it's really uh, something interesting to look at. Um, of course, email, but that's that's really the default. Almost automatically, you get uh, one kind or the other uh, CRM, and this can be uh, really high level to just some more fields around the email address. Um, lead scoring. Uh, sales uh, management, working with deal flows and deal stages, site and event tracking. That's really important to, to track. Uh, site tracking, is, of course, is important if you want to track uh, which pages, uh, pages your prospects in your funnel actually visits. Uh, and event tracking is more scrolls or button clicks or link clicks or downloads uh, other than after a form, of course. Um, it speaks for itself that uh, formally you have to uh, have a GDPR uh, opt-in for site and event tracking, so beware. Um, automation possibilities, um, do they have a, a really user-friendly editor? And we're talking about e uh, editing the email messages. Uh, What's the standard reputation of the platform? Uh, I believe there's one or the other uh, contest where uh, big platforms um, get a yearly award or something for how well their standard reputation is. And you as a client benefit from that because your delivery rate will be higher. Uh, what kind of integrations do they have? Um, we talked about this uh, in, I believe, section session two or three uh, with uh, concern to marketing stack. Well, I think your mar marketing automation slash CRM slash email tool, uh, are different functionalities, but mostly they are offered in one package. Uh, I think it's probably your most important tool for customer uh, and prospect engagement and management. So I really think about deeply uh, what you choose. Um, I have here some marketing automation apps uh, listed of some. Uh, the best one I know in the market um, for small and medium sized businesses. Um, there are more tools, but like for example, Salesforce or um, I believe uh, Adobe has now uh, bought Marketo, um, but um, they're quite upmarket. So uh, we talk about, I believe, at least uh, $1,500 per month or so for uh, if you get a little bit body in your email list. Um, 
the most expensive, but also a, a really uh, a good program, uh, good marketing automation package is HubSpot. They're uh, listed at the, I believe, at the NASDAQ. Um, they are the subject owner of the word inbound slash content marketing. Uh, I think 10, 12 years ago, something. Um, other really big name in the market is, of course, MailChimp. Uh, I believe they have the first few thousand addresses are for free for basic email functionality and list management. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of them, but uh, that's just uh, something uh, with the user interface. That's not uh, due to a lack of quality of, uh, or something. Um, and I'm personally a big fan of the upper two. Uh, I'm a reseller of active campaign. Uh, and um, I also look, uh, would urge you to look at Autopilot HQ. Um, well, take a look at all the apps for yourself. What I will do tomorrow, um, I will sign you up with a free 14 day trial of active campaign. It stops automatically if you don't do anything, so you don't have to. But you can look around and say, hey, how does a tool like that uh, uh, um, work? How does it feel? Uh, you can look around a little bit. Um, and I will also uh, will put a nice offer in my uh, newsletter. It's a lifetime offer. but. Uh, um, if you have a native apps and you want to into orchestrate uh, your in-app messaging and push mes messaging with uh, email uh, or more uh, channels, um, then the upper uh, names are not just mentioned are not uh, valid. And uh, the best I can suggest are OneSignal and CleverTap. I believe CleverTap was one of the tools uh, that I know, though there are a lot of uh, tools, but uh, that offers uh, WhatsApp for business integration. So um, WhatsApp of quality is, uh, is, is, is a huge and fully engaged uh, and everybody who has a, a smartphone, I believe. Um, so it's really interesting to integrate that channel. Um, And then if you want to keep uh, saying, well, uh, a marketing automation slash CRM package is too big for me, but I do have a lot of email addresses and and uh, I, uh, I downloaded my uh, LinkedIn uh, base. Uh, yes, you can do that. Um, then there is a tool, I believe it's uh, 20 or 30 uh, US dollars, uh, one time, I believe, at gmas.co. Um, and that's really nice functionality for uh, for working with Google Sheets and your Gmail and Mail merge uh, every date every data point you have in your Google Sheet about your list. Um, so far, then we're going to talk about lead nurturing, and I want to take you with me to a really nice. Um, article on medium i'm gonna zoom in a little well first the overview and then we're gonna zoom in in the in a sec um on the left in the green you see uh, uh user stages visitor prospect activated user customer active customer and loyal customer um in the middle you see elite scoring uh flow you uh the, sc the score is in the beginning zero and you uh it goes uh higher it increases um to a certain point um the the offer suggests uh at a, a closing rate uh of 10 15 percent SDR is a really outbound calling, sales, re re uh, sales development uh, representative picking up the phone and, and make an outbound call. So uh, human time gets invested. Um, 
if you have the right contact person on the phone, uh, then of course you have to uh, talk about some things like uh, uh, what they want to get out of your product. And uh, if you have a good uh, telephone conversation, you uh, you will really get a conversation instead of a ter interrogation. And we talk about uh, we will talk about band in an, uh, in a minute. It stands for budget, authority, need, and timeline. Um, and the offer says, well, are they never going to know, never in uh, uh, the right prospect? Uh, well, just uh, keep them on your nurturing list. Uh, they don't bite. Uh, maybe, or oh, yes, uh, they're qualified at this moment. They're looking for a deal. Uh, make them an offer. You, you send them in the, in your, really in your sales funnel. Maybe later, more product uh, tips, etc. cetera. Um, and here they have different kinds of flows. Uh, of course, uh, you have behavioral product engagement and non-product engagement. Um, he has uh, different uh, flows uh, analyzed for different types of uh, uh, function functions in the decision-making unit. Um, so it's not really for B2C, but more for B2B this. Um, If you have this kind of data, of course, a CNO, you send other details about your product and your the possibilities of the market and trends and how your product uh, matches with the ongoing trends. Then if you have a, a meal sequence for a developer or a lead developer uh, who looks more at the technical aspects of your uh, API, if you're, uh, uh, your business is a little bit further down the road. Um, User onboarding, something else than customer onboarding, user onboarding. Uh, tips, best practices, uh, offer help, nurturing, product updates, newsletter, edu uh, educational content. Just remind, um, you need an opt-in to email with people. So again, the most general uh, opt-in is a newsletter, then you just can send them until they unsubscribe anything that you want. And uh, just uh, a little bit rough in my talk now, but um, of course, keep it as relevant as possible. Um, well, if you don't have a newsletter opt-in, but they did, for example, you get their details within a, a download of a, of a white paper or something you offered. Uh, I repeat the tip that when they hit the, the opt-in uh, field, say don't they don't opt-in just for one download, but with the download comes a series of emails. I would mention how many of uh, something like a five to 10 emails or something, uh, so not indefinitely. Um, but if you don't uh, mention it, uh, well, your, uh, your, uh, your, your illegal behavior. I mean, maybe I'm a little bit tight on the law, but it's your choice what you what you do with it. Um, and of course, if they do make a deal, you have a customer onboarding process on which we're going to talk about, I believe, uh, this this uh, Wednesday. Um, and upsell renewals, we're not going to talk about at this moment. Um, So, having said that, this sheet you already have seen before, uh, I believe one week ago. Um, just to re, uh, re, uh, uh, recap, why lead scoring identify which stage uh, uh, each contact or deal is, identify high value prospects. Uh, how does it work? Reverse engineer uh, from past conversions, their interaction with your channels and content. If you have uh, uh, already a little bit, I uh, say, uh, track record uh, data, uh, if you don't have enough conversions or enough data, make assumptions for now. Um, best practices, different models for different stages, use negative scoring in the setup alerts from prospect getting uh -huh. Cross analytics integration with CRM. What kind of data points, demographic information you have, company size, location, um, but can also be female, uh, age, um, anything. 
lead source information, traffic, campaign, what offer did they see, etc. Um, and behavioral info, uh, information, uh, and mostly that's uh, a synonym, synonym for content consumption. So how would that look? Um, how could you set it up for yourself? It would be something like this. This could be a, a customer journey of a B2B prospect. Um, it's a long life cycle, uh, a long uh, nurturing cycle, 18 months, one and a half year before they make it or somewhere uh, there, they make a decision. Um, you have all the categories of content, product pages, live demos in real life events, um, live webinars, videos, downloads, and registration wall is not really a wall like you have to register, but uh, you do have to leave some data, email address or name, uh, or in the data enrichment cycle, you ask them for a business size and job description or something. Um, and of course, the newsletter. Um, And this is why you, my, uh, the, this program is uh, set up like EAST Foundation, uh, middle of nurturing the funnel, the, the, the funnel itself, every step, and then advertising. Because, of course, in the end, most, uh, or most, a lot of traffic will come through advertising one way or the other. Um, But everything what you do in uh, before increases the ROI on your uh, advertising investment. So um, here's our advertising uh, organic search. Of course, it's not an advertising, but you did a, do a lot of work to get number uh, one, two, or three in Google. Um, but of course, also be a, a Google ad. I named it here organic search, but. Um, so they start that journey in month one. Gray is the, uh, I put, normally you put the timeline above, but first I wanted to make another, a little bit a timeline. But, um, so they start with, uh, uh, they uh, look for the top 10 benefits of uh, say, having a GDPR monitoring tool or whatever. Um, and they uh, they uh, download it and uh, decide, well, uh, I'm going to subscribe to this newsletter also. Also, they look at that same visit to uh, some other pages. They look around at your features, your pricing page, and your, uh, or the, that's the week after that. They receive a newsletter and uh, they search again for some, and they show up on your website again from organic search. Um, but then they uh, engage with your newsletter. Um, then you said the retargeting campaign because you have a, a live webinar upcoming uh, with the best practices for uh, GDPR management software. Uh, um, actually, they came up here from uh, from an, an, uh, an onsite and they see an onsite pop up. But you can, I'm not going to tell all the story, but you see that uh, at different moments, they engage with different parts of your content. And uh, slowly in the, in the uh, vertical bar below, they collect points. Um, if you have enough data about your lead nurturing funnel, you will find out that there were also Cut off points like a, a good cut off points could be like if they don't engage with your newsletter, depending on how often you send them. Uh, after uh, three, four, uh, the last three, three or four emails, they didn't engage with you. Like, hey, uh, you could send them on a special watch list. Like, uh, hey, um, uh, do we have, or send them on a retargeting list form because we can't reach them anymore with email. We need to. Uh, to uh, to reach them with a paid channel, a retargeting list, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if they do 
collect enough points because they do keep engaging with you, uh, visiting uh, content you organize. Is, they um, you have sent in the newsletter. Well, uh, we are uh, in uh, this uh, uh, summit in uh, in uh, Houston, Texas uh, uh, next week. Um, well, come along because uh, we will offer a cup of coffee and a nice uh, donut or something. And they do visit your uh, stand. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of points in this case here, uh, 30 points. Um, and if you have collected uh, enough points, uh, you send an alert or an email automatically uh, to your uh, uh, outbound colleague or yourself. And you pick up the phone and you call them like, hey, um, you, uh, you've been engaging for, with us for a while. Uh, is it OK if we schedule an appointment for a live demo? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I saw you. Uh, 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 I wouldn't mention it. Uh, but uh, what would it be uh, mostly about? Do you like uh, a GD bar? GDPR management or GDPR project management or uh, what aspect of your software like uh, would you like to have a deep dive about and uh, maybe I can tell you about our roadmap etc. Well, you schedule a demo, they like it. Uh, they also go to another webinar in this case about uh, how to implement it. You give them a call for hey maybe you would like to have an uh, other webinar uh, uh, with uh, some of your team members and say and uh, your customer is still available or still uh, enthusiastic. And so you're guiding them through your funnel. This is not a linear process. It's a, let's just say, a, in a sense, a chaotic process. Uh, for you, it's important that you measure as much as possible the interactions you have with your prospects because, um, well, there's almost nothing else you have to, to work on your business, actually. Of course, except to have an ex excellent product, but um, so when they're um, ready for a sales development rep representative, well, um, you want to check for pain and fit. Pain, uh, are you the solution to the problem? How big is the pain relative to other problems? Is there urgency? Um, of course. Uh, Important is, can you create urgency? Can you create impact? Can you calculate opportunity costs, lost income, safe costs, etc.? cetera? Um, this can be really interesting to, uh, to also help them to uh, sell, them, uh, sell them your solution internally, especially if they have a good feeling about your solution, but they have to convince other people uh, they need hard data. So what kind of content, calculators, uh, calculating sheets if you don't want to put it on your website, uh, et cetera. Uh, and uh, can they afford us? Is budget available at this moment? Like if you're uh, selling to governments, they work mostly with yearly or four yearly budgets. Uh, the budgets need to be allocated mostly. Um, so if that's your timeline, if you're uh, working with a four, not a four year, but a yearly uh, uh, schedule, then you have to know about uh, the, 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 let's say, the iterations. Eh? Is, it, is it a budget time in, uh, say, uh, September, or is it really a calendar year? So uh, you need to have uh, your contract uh, in order, uh, say, by September, October, uh, implementation time uh, working in, or, uh, getting up and running uh, so they can work from it with the 1st of uh, January. Or you have to know your uh, customer and your business uh, details. And can they implement us for it? For, uh, if they have a CRM that doesn't match with the, what you offer, or uh, et cetera. Um, technical and organizational strains uh, can also be an issue. Well, band is, uh, I believe, uh, uh, from its ori origin, uh, it's um, an IBM method methodology, I believe. Uh, questions is whose uh, budget is it coming out? How much will it cost to build a system by yourself? Uh, all kind of 
budget and cost and uh, uh, financial uh, metrics related questions. I would fire uh, these questions like an interrogation, more like uh, like inspiration for you. What kind of information do you have to collect? Um, authority, are you talking to the decision maker or an influencer or user? Um, Well, need, why did they search for your product? Um, how important is it addressing uh, your personal goals to the company? Um, top priorities, timeline, any upcoming events that you'd like to have a solution placed by. It comes also with critical events. Are you planning any uh, project here, lead generation, etc.? cetera? Um, check scan for critical events, it's a little bit uh, same like this, but uh, this is uh, if, uh, if a prospect says this something to you like, uh, hey, we need this in place before October, uh, so we can utilize the illusion, for example, for Black Friday. Well, uh, this is a massive buyer signal, and uh, uh, you have to find out well what uh, what happens uh, to the organization if it's in place, and uh, uh, what happens to the your contact person personally. Um, and what happens if not? 